we've lined up four mid-range Android phones for you. And boy, it's a good time to be mid. Guten Tag, we are DHRME. Damn, hombre, reliable, magical electricity. All right, we'll have full camera samples and our pics of these phones at the end of this video, so stick around for that. But let's start off with the Samsung Galaxy A54. Okay, we don't know how this happened, but literally two months after release, the Samsung Galaxy A54 dropped $100 in its retail price. Samsung is known to swing quite a bit in their pricing of phones, but also other products like their true wireless earbuds. So what did we like about the Galaxy A54? Let's just say this, Samsung knows, really knows how to make displays and solid hardware. The screen on the A54 is just mwah is a crisp and bright OLED screen with no issues with visibility outdoors. Even the always on display is ever so slightly brighter compared to the others on the list. On the topic of the screen, this mid-ranger comes with 120 Hertz refresh rate. That seems to be a phone metric that many folks tend to value. We're a bit indifferent to it, but hey, you refresh at whatever rate you like. We ain't judging. The standby battery life as well as in general has been great. We'd say better than the Google Pixels. No issues with lasting an entire day with moderate to heavy use. Then let's talk about the build quality. You get a glass sandwich held together with a plastic frame. I mean, that plastic frame still feels solid, but doesn't have that look and cold touch that the more premium aluminum frames do on the Pixel phones or the nothing phone one. The Galaxy A54 comes in four colors, lime, graphite, white, and violet, all of which are Awesome. The phone is comfortable to hold in the hand or hands rather. It is a big phone, but that makes it a joy to type on two-handed and to consume content on as well. Whether that be reading or watching videos. And if you're watching a video or listening to music, it's good to know that the speaker on it gets loud. And the nice thing is that at higher volumes, there's little to no distortion to the sound quality. Nice. From sound quality to security quantity and updates. The Galaxy A54 comes with a fingerprint scanner and face unlock. The fingerprint scanner works very well, better than those on Pixel phones. The face unlock is okay. It's no face ID like on the iPhone, but works well if the angle and the lighting both are right. Oh, it won't work if you're wearing sunglasses. And finally, if you're someone who uses their phones for as long as possible, then the Galaxy A54 might be the most interesting one on this list. Samsung promises four years of Android updates and five years of security updates. The debatable aspect on the A54 is that glass back. It will be more fragile to drops, but is more resistant to scratches and the heft makes it feel more premium. So that's up to you to decide. And like we mentioned before, this is a heavier and bigger phone with a 6.4 inch display. If you like it, then great. But in our opinion, it isn't quite a one hand, small pocket kind of phone. What you will notice on a mid range device from Samsung compared to the flagship is the size of the bezels. To us personally, this isn't a deal breaker, but for you over buzz, Zealous ones, take a note of that. The cameras on the Galaxy A54 are also very capable. On the hardware side more than the software. They do tend to over brighten things and we prefer the Pixel's color science in most cases. We'll see more in the camera samples section later on in this video. The Samsung Galaxy A54 isn't all awesome limes and violets, however. Despite it having a glass back, there's no wireless charging, only wired 25 watt charging. The wired speeds are just okay and will still take around one and a half to two hours to charge to full. The design, especially on the back, might be on par with flagship designs, but that camera bum means the wobble on the table is a very real thing. Unless you solve that with a case, of course. What we kind of expected, especially when we see that Samsung is using an Exynos processor, is some kind of weirdness in the performance of the phone. Now, don't get us wrong, for a mid-ranger it performs admirably fast and fluid, and plenty for most of us. But there have been jittery moments with some lag when unlocking the phone or opening apps. And finally, there's the whole One UI from Samsung thing. Where do we start? The slow animations when you pull down for notifications, swiping opens your app drawer, but it won't automatically start the keyboard, so you can't search until you tap the search bar. You can't remap holding down the power button to Google Assistant instead of Bixby. The amount of bloatware apps is ridiculous. I mean, on most Samsung phones, you have a separate app for the dialer, files, messages, clock, gallery, and even a separate Galaxy store. That's already a lot, but you get some undesirable extras on the A54. 
When setting up the phone, it asked us if we wanted to install apps like Candy Crush and other games. We said no, and it still went ahead and started installing them. Like, what the f Oh, and they also throw in Disney Plus too, in case you did or didn't ask for it. Sometimes the special app installer also sticks in the notification shade with no way to dismiss it. We get it, if Samsung's selling this phone for cheap, it's gotta make money somewhere else. So unless you're in the mood to deal with app management or you like Samsung's approach, then this is going to get on your nerves too. The Pixel 7a is the latest release on this list and also the most expensive. The 7a brings a lot to the table that makes people wonder why you'd even consider the flagship Pixel 7 anymore or vice versa. Why not just get the flagship instead for a bit more? The 7a compared to its predecessor has been upgraded to the latest processor, the Tensor G2 and also comes with 8 gigs of RAM. The phone is no slouch and flies through apps with no issues. It also flies through swipes and scrolls with an improved 90Hz refresh rate. Now, this is a matter of preference. Personally, we went from a 120Hz Pro Motion display on the iPhone 13 Pro to the 90Hz on the Pixel 7a. Is our life now worse because of it? Initially, well, you do notice it. After a while though, maybe a day, you kind of get used to it. The 7a out of the box is actually set to 60 hertz, probably to save battery. Oh, speaking of which, the battery life is also good. It's not great, but also not terrible. We could end the day with about 20% charge left, and this was with the 90 hertz refresh rate turned on. The best part about Android software on Pixel devices is that it's in its most Google form with no bloatware or random apps. <coughs> Samsung. The advantage of a Pixel is that you're the first to get new Android features like speech to text, magic eraser, unblur, or the latest magic editor for photos. That last feature isn't available until later in this year. On the outside, the Pixel design since the Pixel 6 has been iconic with a camera bar across the width of the phone. Everyone easily knows you're rocking a Pixel phone. And beyond the status symbol aspect, it's kind of useful to rest your finger on and helps prevent the phone from rocking on a table too. The colors have been revamped with the new C and Coral. We have the C here and absolutely love it. The size of phones have gotten so big lately that it's hard finding a compact phone. If you're looking for the most pocketable with the Pixel experience, then the 7a is great. It's the reason I like it more than the Pixel 7 and Pixel 6. The feel in the hand is nice too. Feels and looks premium, but still as compact as it can get in these times. And the feel when typing on the keyboard is amazing. The haptics are just perfect. What isn't Pixel perfect on the 7a is that camera. We'll talk more about it at the end of this video in the camera comparison. In many cases, the tried and tested combination of camera hardware and software from the 6a outperformed, yes, you heard that right, outperformed the 7a. But what Google did give us as an improvement over the 6a is the addition of wireless charging. Let's just say it has wireless charging. The seven and a half watt charging speed is more of a punishment than a feature. If you're using your phone heavily by using navigation and streaming music, then the wireless charger can just barely keep the battery at the same level. And otherwise, it's still so very slow that we rarely chose to use it, but rather plugged in a cable instead. But that's when you hear us complaining again. 18 watt charging wired. Again, not the fastest and can take around one and a half hours to get to a full charge. You know what also isn't fast? The fingerprint scanner. It's the same as it's been since the Pixel 6. It's okay when it works, but there are plenty of occasions when it fails to read your fingerprint and then you're back to the pin unlock. Another feature which was added to the 7a is face unlock, but it's more like a half face unlock. Most apps like banking apps don't deem it secure enough as a login method, so you're back to the fingerprint scanner. The face unlock only works when the lighting is right, you're looking at it at the right angle, and you're not wearing things like sunglasses. And speaking of sunglasses, the visibility of the screen outdoors is fine. We're able to use it, but for those of you looking for a super bright display, then the 7a isn't it. The speaker on the other hand gets very loud, but it does start to sound a bit distorted with a loss of bass at higher volumes. Then there's a debate on the plastic back instead of glass and the visible bezel. Now, that isn't something that bothers us as much as others. And look, these are mid-range smartphones, so you're going to be expecting some cut corners. But at $500, is this still a mid-ranger? And does it check more boxes for you compared to the other cheaper phones on this list? Look, there's a fair few things to love about the Nothing Phone 1, and let's get it out of the way. That light show on the back is pretty freaking cool. Also called the Glyph interface, it can be customized to do many things like showing a pattern when specific people call. 
showing the charging status, even syncing with the music you're playing. But this phone is all about design. And so shout out to the little SIM ejector tool with the little transparent capsule. Another cool aspect of the design are the even bezels all around the screen. Something that's usually reserved for expensive phones because it involves bending the screen inside the housing. Nice attention to detail. Nothing also continues its ways of keeping things clean by not adding bloatware. Just the default Google stuff and a couple of nothing apps which are very useful and clean. Now we're not sure if this is because they have a lower budget or because they want to keep things clean, but a couple of generations will reveal the truth. And that lack of bloatware translates into something important. Excellent performance. We've had very few stutters and crashes in our time with the phone, making it truly a joy to use. Continuing with the build, the speakers are also quite loud and have a big sound. And for those of you who like it big, this is the biggest phone on the list with 6.5 inches of screen real estate. And that screen really is excellent. One of the best here with a 120 Hertz refresh rate. It may not be the densest at 401 pixels per inch, but it's plenty and you do get a solid Gorilla Glass 5 panel. The 4,500 milliamp hours battery was sufficient for a day's heavy use in our case about five and a half hours of screen on time. But what's really great is the 33 watt fast charging and even 15 watt wireless charging. By comparison, the Pixel 7a and 6a charge at 18 watts, wired. Now those were a lot of positives, but we've said next to nothing negative about this phone, but we're about nothing but the truth. So by the power of the pun gods, here goes. The update situation on the phone one is decent. The three years of Android updates and four years of security updates makes them better than nothing, but still not at Samsung levels. Quick note, can we give a shout out to how nothing does their changelog? It's so clear and there's always understandable value. Those glyphs will be real here. We're not looking to show off our phones. When we turn our phones over, we basically want the phones to fade away into the background. And that's why this pretty cool glyph interface doesn't appeal to us. After a while, it amounted to nothing. It's just bling on the side of the phone. You want to actually be the most quiet. And that phone itself is big and slippery. The camera situation is a nothing if ordinary. Among the four phones we're talking about, this has the worst camera system. Low light, front facing, video, almost in every case, it was the worst. In bright daylight, the rear camera was Decent. The screen was good, as we said, but in direct sunlight, that amounted to nothing due to the lower peak brightness of the panel, especially when we had sunglasses on. All right, we're all punned out. And finally, we've got the oldest on the list and also the cheapest, the Pixel 6a. Everything we mentioned about why we love the Pixel 7a also applies here. The design, those keyboard haptics, the Pixel software, battery life and performance are all very similar to the Pixel 7a. Yes, the 6a has the older Tensor G1 chipset with 6 gigs of RAM, but in day-to-day -day use, it hasn't felt any slower than the 7a. And the 6a only has the 60 Hertz refresh rate, no wireless charging and no face unlock. If you're wondering why there are so many air quotes, then go back to the Pixel 7a section of this video. We actually like the design of the Pixel 6a more than the 7a. There's something about that two-tone back above and below the camera bar. And that single black bar camera visor is cleaner looking too. Very Stormtrooper like. The 6a does have older camera hardware. So that is something we'll leave judgment for in the camera section coming up soon. One thing we can already say is that the Pixel 6a only shoots video using the front facing camera in 1080p and not in 4K. Comment down below if you need 4K on the front facing camera. We're curious, why? But just like on the Pixel 7a, the brightness outdoors, plastic back and thicker bezels might be something to consider. For us, it wasn't a deal breaker, apart from that it has the same flaws such as slower wired charging at 18 watts and a less than ideal fingerprint scanner. Since the 6a is now a year older, it means it gets one year less of Android updates. But you'll get two more years of Android updates and four more years of security updates. Before we go to our picks, let's look at the cameras in more detail. Starting with the front facing selfies, the 6a and 7a are nearly identical. Good color, detail. The output of the Nothing Phone 1 is a bit washed out with loss of detail. The colors themselves are warmer and flatter, unlike the contrasty look of the pixels. Zoomed out, the A54 looks good, but it's clear that it's masking its lack of detail by smoothing out colors and textures. Colors actually look a bit more natural compared to the pixels, yes. 
but there's certainly loss of detail in the shadows. Looking at this harsh backlit selfie with two people, now nothing falls apart with a lot of flaring and basically the image is a washout. It's a similar story with the A54, the blacks aren't as black as they should be. Case in point, Kevin's beard. Again, the pixels perform the best here. Also in this harshly backlit selfie with just one person, the pixels AI magic dominates here by exposing the face correctly and not letting the harsh sun take over the photo. When it comes to the rear camera in broad daylight, without a challenge, all these phones do a good job, which we'd expect in 2023. In portrait mode with the rear camera though, when it comes to objects, things are surprisingly confusing. In this photo of this motorbike, for example, the 6A really struggles with identifying the subject and you almost get a tilt shift miniature effect. The 7A could just not make this a portrait shot. Trust us, we had many attempts. The Nothing and the A54 did a better job and the Bokeh actually looks like something a mirrorless camera with a prime would output, with plenty of background blur further away and the closer objects including the car wheels being in focus. Let's talk about human rear portraits, or in this case, Kevin rear portraits. The first thing to note here is that the Galaxy A54 and the Nothing phone have a much wider field of view since the pixels crop in while using the portrait mode. The A54 and Nothing's algorithms get Kevin's face in focus, but also to the left of the image, you start seeing that part of the hedge is out and then again in focus. The 7A keeps the whole of the hedge on that side in focus and the 6A straight up blurs out anything that's not Kevin. Here also in terms of color science, the Pixel 6A is our pick. Moving from close faces to far away buildings, the wide angle lens has about the same field of view on all four cameras, but the devil is in the details or should we say the angel. The brick texture and the angels on the church are much clearer on the Pixel 6a than any other phone, including the Pixel 7a. In this picture of the path and the bridge, we're trying to see which of these goes widest. And to be honest, they're all pretty similar, but you can squeeze a few extra things in the view on the Galaxy A54 and the Nothing phone. The telephoto shots all crop in about the same too, as these pictures of the bridges show us. Right, that's bright enough. Let's go over to lower light. The 7A and especially the 6A really struggle in low light in this photo of our merch. The Nothing gets a bit more detail of the lint on our popsicle icicle test cap, but overall the result isn't great either. The Samsung here does the best, both with detail and exposure. But Google software chops come in once we enable night mode, especially on the 7A. The 6A also pulls much more detail, but gets the color a bit wrong with that greenish tinge. The A54's normal photo was surprisingly just as good as its own night mode. Nothing's photo has a slight color cast and although night mode pulls in much more detail, we think that it's still the least pleasing of the bunch. And how do the front facing cameras do in low light? Well, the Samsung's doing Samsung things, but trying to over brighten, but Kevin's beard clearly isn't smiling as much as his face is. The Nothing actually is closer to reality in this photo, but yeah, that's not really helpful unless you're going for a noir look. The 6A and 7A are pretty rubbish in low light without night mode again. In the night mode, again, nothing goes for that noir look, which I guess is kind of artsy, but there's a tiny bit more detail, but that's that. Nothing to write home about. After night mode, the pixels really catch up and probably surpass the Samsung. The blacks are all fairly crushed though. All right, so far we think the pixels are leading followed by the Galaxy A54 and the nothing is a distant last. But what about video? Well, for front facing selfie style vlogging, the nothing's footage is pretty much unusable because of the shake. The issues with the backlight, washed out colors and lens flare are also present here. Comparatively, the 6A extracts much more detail while still maintaining that contrasty look. The footage is also stable. The audio levels are higher than on the Nothing and there are fewer compression artifacts. Little bit of popping popsicles. And icing icicles. And testing test. Oh. <laughs> One, two, three. All right, there we go. Comparatively, the 7A clips highlights less than the 6A and retrieves some more blues from the sky. The A54's audio is pretty great too, but challenging light really challenges it. You can see how, uh, how we sound, but also how we look. We do have the sun on us. Yeah. The video is much brighter than the pixels and the details in the faces seem to be a bit more washed out compared to the pixels. In terms of stabilization, we think we prefer the Samsung Galaxy A54 the best, followed by the Pixel 7a, then the 6a, and the nothing on the last spot. 
And finally, in low light video, the Samsung gives you some crazy noise and over brightening. Well, we see that noir look returning to the nothing. Both are subpar in these conditions. Scratch that, all four are pretty rubbish and the nothing at least has something of an artsy vibe to it. Also on the rear camera with backlight, the 6A and the nothing are in last place pretty much. With the A54 slightly edging out the 7A in our book, but it's pretty ordinary output from all the cameras here. So what's our conclusion? Well, for stills, we'd give the clear edge to the pixels, and the video is where Samsung starts to show its prowess, but the pixels are still pulling no punches. The nothing phone is nothing short of ordinary. Okay, Kevin, which one would you pick? Well, I'm saying nothing about the nothing since I haven't used it. Between the pixels and the Samsung, I'd go for the Pixel. I've generally been a Pixel person due to the clean Android experience, the camera chops, and being the first to experience new Android feature drops. Between the Pixel 7a and the 6a, I really wanted to say the 7a, but because of all the half-baked features like face unlock, wireless charging, and the unimpressive leap in camera quality, I'm gonna go for the 6a. The money you save and the feature overlap with the newer A model is just a no-brainer for me. Well, I haven't used the 7A, but I think for me cameras are important, so I'll be a bit controversial here and say the Samsung Galaxy A54. Don't shoot me, I'll explain, I'll explain. To start off with, ecosystem lock-in, am I right? I'm a bit of a Samsung head, I kind of like the ecosystem integration with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro here. The cameras don't underperform that much, and also, so we shoot a lot of video, like microphone tests on this channel, and I like the Samsung camera app for that because you can actually select which microphone you're using. That's a little secret. Had the Nothing Phone one had better cameras, that would be my choice, no doubt. But the 6A is a close second. Guys, all hardware you see in this video was purchased by us except the Samsung Galaxy A54, which was loaned out by Samsung. Look, we are very particular about not being sponsored by companies whose products we review. So to sustain us, we rely on you guys. With AdSense revenue being unpredictable, help us make our dream of doing this channel full time by becoming a YouTube member or patron. For a price of a coffee a month, not even a Starbucks coffee, but a cheap ass homebrew, you can support us and get bonus content and the occasional giveaway. You've been seeing nothing but pixels in a galaxy. And we've been DHRME. Namaste. Namaste. Help us make our dream of going I can sing high and sing low.